All right, guys, first off, as always, good day. I'm glad you're here. So today we're going to be learning about Calvinism. We're actually going to be looking at how it came to be, where it was predominantly at, and basically what happened also with King Henry VIII. Um, so we're going to be looking at that today. So let's look at the objectives. First, we're going to analyze how Calvinism and other religions spread throughout Europe. Okay, um, then we're going to examine the beliefs of Calvinism. What do they actually believe in? Things like that. And then we're going to create an argument on whether uh, there will be a limit into heaven. Okay, that's going to play a vital role in um, the Calvinism beliefs. All right, so here is your warm-up picture. Um, the first question asks you, what do you think this artist is trying to say? All right, so look at the picture, look at the sign. I know there's not much to it. Um, so basically, what do you think this artist is trying to say? The second question is, um, looking at what the sign says, do you believe that the artist is, um, like they're saying that, you know, only the good can come in, that there's a limited seating, you know, in heaven, um, or that, like, only the best of the best. So, like, somebody might be there, but then somebody who's more pure, more good, um, just passed away, so now somebody else gets kicked out. You know, so it's only, like, the elite club, you know, type of thing. So what do you think? Tell me what you think, what you believe. Okay, what this um, this artist is basically um, saying with that sign. Okay, so pause the video if you're still writing, but we're moving on in three, two, one. All right, so last class we were talking about Martin Luther and his 95 Thesis and how he started the Protestant movement. So the thing is, this guy John Calvin, he converted to Protestant. To being a Protestant. Um, and the thing is, he was forced to leave France because France was predominantly Catholic. Okay, so what he did is he went to Switzerland and wrote a book uh, in 1536 called The Institutes of Christianity Religion. And basically, he gave a rundown of what Protestants are about, uh, what they believe in, things like that. So eventually, he became a leader, you know, he became so, such a astute student of it that he became a leader. But then he kind of branches off a little bit from Protestant uh, faith. And he says, you know what? Um, we are predestined to either go to heaven or hell. Okay. Now, if you remember a couple um, lessons ago, uh, I was telling you guys about Dante in his book, how he tells you, how he says that there's a, um, heaven, limbo, um, well, purgatory, limbo, and hell. John Calvin goes, no, 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 there's heaven, hell, and you are, before you're even born, you are already destined to go to one or the other. Okay, that's, that's, that's it. You're either going one way or the other, you know, and you basically, um, don't get to choose, you know, you, God's already chosen for you, you know, God's already said you are going to heaven, you are going to hell, type of thing, um, so those who are elected are saved and um, will receive salvation, whereas the others um, are basically damned, you know, they call them repro reprobate, okay, now here's the thing, I'm sure people are like, well, how can they be sure? He's kind of saying, you know, you know what? You know when you meet somebody, if they're pure in heart, they're a good person, you know, and that chances are they really don't commit much sin, you know. Those people are the elected, you know, because God made them that way. They made, He made them, or he or she, mm -hmm, uh, made them that way, you know. So that's why they are the way they are. Whereas some people are very just cruel, mean, things like that. Well, guess what? God made them that way because they're going to hell, you know? So that's how he said. Now, 
We're going to get to, I'm sure you have some other questions, but we're going to get to them in a second, okay? So here's my first question to you. Do you believe John Calvin is right that our souls are predetermined to be saved or not? What do you think? Do you think he's right that before we're even born, God has already made his decision on um, you're going to be saved, you're not? Or do you think that it's based off your decisions, your um, way of going through life, you know, how you handle situations, you know, and whether you do good or bad? What do you think? Okay, so pause the video, go ahead, uh, write your response, but we're moving on in three, two, one. All right, so Calvin said, uh, this is his quote. He has once for all determined both whom he would admit to salvation and whom he would condemn to destruction. Well, then there were some people who were like, well, if uh, God's already chosen and I know I'm doing good, um, why can't I do whatever I want here on earth? You know, just like whatever, you know, I'm already saved. And then he was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Okay. Here's the thing. Um, no one could be ever really be absolutely certain that you're saved you really can't you know you can see it in other people but you can't see it in yourself you know uh you can't be certain about you because remember people do things and a lot of times they think they're doing it for the right reasons but in reality it's hurting somebody or it's actually a bad thing they're doing you know so again, that's what he's trying to say, that it's easy to see who are the good people, you know, but it's hard for you to know for certain if you're a good person or not. You may believe you are. You may think you are. But to other people in the outside perspective, they might say, like, no, you're not. You're mean. You're a jerk. You do this and that. But you think you, think you are good and pure. In reality, you may not be. Okay, so he said also that the elected should should rule society as the government leaders, because if these good and wholesome um, people are the leaders, then they can lead by example. They'll make sure to do the good things, what God would want them to do and things like that. And the society will be better. Okay. Now, Calvinism had a code. The code was like tulip. Okay, each letter represented something. Total deprivation, okay, uh, unconditional election, limited atonement. Now, limited atonement, basically, like you're asking for forgiveness. You're trying to make up for your errors. You know, you break something, you replace it. You know, that's atoning for your mistake. Um, he's saying, yeah, let's keep that down to a minimum. The, the lower the number, the better. And not just a day, but your entire life. All right. Irresistible grace and perseverance perseverance of the saints. You know, because the thing is, he's like, those saints, uh, basically God made them holy. You know, that they were put on earth and they did good. You know, so we should, hey, these guys were, are in heaven. These guys did good, you know. So there's that. We're going to move on in three, two, one. Now, here's my question because, you know, um, this is, I've heard some stuff, I read some articles and some of that. Um, if people knew they were elected to go to heaven, they knew, do you think they would care about the rules and laws here on earth? You know, because the thing is, like, I've, again, being older, I've seen these court cases, I've seen, I've read these articles and some of that about people going to jail, things like that. They're in the court because they killed somebody, things like that. And they say, like, oh, I was told by God and, you know, I, I, I follow the, the laws and the rules of God, not man. You know, your rules are nothing compared to the rules from heaven. And I'm like, um, yeah, but. God made it a rule not to kill. It's it's in the Ten Commandments. So <laughs> you're kind of kind of going against what God said, you know. So there's some people who think because they're 
they they believe they're um, doing God's work, but in reality they're not. But if people knew for a fact that they were going to heaven, do you think they would care about the rules and laws here on earth? What do you think? Okay. So, and be sure to tell me yes, no, and then why. Okay. Uh, we're going to be moving on. So pause the video if you're still writing. But we're going to move on in three, two, one. So in Geneva, Switzerland, 1536, basically Calvinism starts a church government. You know, they basically take over the government and implement laws based off the church rulings. You know, the church, what the church says is good and not, and not good. Um, consist, consistory was a special court for enforcing moral discipline, meaning they made sure that people were living a good life. That if you did something bad, you would go to court and they would basically say you're innocent or you're guilty. You, were, you actually did this or it was misinterpreted. You know, and they would decide. And they basically try to make Geneva and the people from Geneva pure. You know, now I've had some students in the past ask what crimes, what kind of crimes they talk about. Here's just a couple. You know, besides the standard killing, stealing, things like that, here's some other ones. One is dancing. Dancing is prohibited. You cannot dance. Um, singing obscure songs. You know, so, you know, people sing songs usually when they're drinking, things like that. Uh, no, none of that. Speaking of drinking, no drunkenness. No drunkenness whatsoever. Uh, no swearing, no cussing, things like that. And last one is no playing cards, because that's a form of gambling, you know. Um, and I've had a student ask me, like, what if someone said, like, I bet you can't do, technically that is kind of, kind of gambling, because you are saying, I bet you. You know, that's basically kind of challenging, and usually um, that could be considered a bet. You know, that is gambling, so. So those are some of the laws that they had. Now, Calvinism actually spread. And if you look on the map, it's kind of that teal color. So in Scotland, uh, where it says like Netherlands, um, and in the middle part where it says Holy Roman Empire, if you look to the left a little bit, um, that's basically where like uh, Geneva, Switzerland is. Okay. Um, so, or is it down south? I think it's down south. Oh, I'm looking at the map wrong. So, either way, it's spreading. And you can see the different religions around. Um, and I want you to keep this map in the back of your head or just remember where it's at on the YouTube um, timeline because you may need to go back to this map. Okay. All right, so here is your next question. How do you feel about Calvinism taking control of a city and enforcing their rules? You know, remember, these are not laws that most places have. These are rules by the church and stuff like that. Because, um, you know, in many places it's okay for you to um, dance or, you know, um, play cards. But they say no. Okay. And the second part to this question is, how would you feel if Fresno was taken over by those rules? If they told you no dancing, you know, no swearing, things like that, like you could be thrown in jail. How would you feel about that? Okay, so the writing prompts on the bottom there to help you out. Um, pause the video, think about it, uh, but we're moving on in three, two, one. All right, so the guy you see on the picture to the right, that is um, Henry VIII. Now, he's married to Catherine of Aragon. Now, the thing is, he wants to have a son. But Catherine actually gave him a daughter, Mary. But she, he, he, she never gave birth to a son. And the thing is, at that time, people thought that the woman controlled whether the kid was a boy or a girl. 
when nowadays, thanks to genealogy or the genetics, we now know that uh, it's males. The guys are actually the ones who decide, you know, because we carry the XY chromosomes. Okay, so it had nothing really to do with the girls, but back then they would say it's a woman's fault that you had five girls and only like maybe one boy. You know, so the thing is, Henry the Eighth was like, well, she's not giving me a son. I want to marry Anne Boleyn so then I could have a son. But the church back then they didn't give it. They didn't give um, divorces or annulments. It was rare for that to happen. I mean, it's, it was extremely rare. They saw it as, you know, you made this uh, pledge before God to marry this person and you're going to stick with them through so thick and thin, you know, healthy, unhealthy, rich or poor, whatever. You're with this person. Henry VIII was like, no, 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 no. She's not giving me a son. I need a son. This girl, Anne Boleyn, would probably give me a son. Um, but the church is like, no, no divorces. So he goes, you know what? Fine, we're done with you. England is done with the Catholic Church. So they basically broke away from them. The Catholic Church was no longer the official religion in England. Basically what happened, now Henry VIII said, I'm going to start a new church in England. And uh, guess what? I'm going to make myself the head of the church. Okay, so... Kind of like, okay, well, he's doing this obviously to get his divorce and things like that. Now, there was a famous guy named Thomas More, a very devout Catholic. And the thing is, he basically told uh, Henry VIII, dude, you can't do this. You know, you shouldn't really do this. This is horrible. You know, there's a lot of Catholics here, you know. And Henry VIII's like, oh, really? It's bad? I shouldn't do this? Okay. Um. Cut off his head. And they did. So Thomas More uh, basically died um, for what he believed. That, you know, hey, you shouldn't do this. And Henry VIII made him lose his head. Now here's the thing. Um, Anne Boleyn, she didn't give him a boy either. Um, so he married another wife. But the thing is, Henry VIII died in, on uh, 1547. And his son, who was only nine years old at the time, ended up taking over. And his name was Edward VI. Okay, so try to remember his name because um, next time we have class, uh, we're going to be talking about him and things like that. Okay. So... Here is your exit ticket question. Make sure, remember, answer only one of these uh, questions. The first one is, should the Catholic Church have given Henry VIII a divorce? Why or why not? Now remember, divorces were rare. It's not like uh, nowadays where people get divorced or annulments all the time. Um, back then, it was very rare. So if, imagine if the king got divorced. What do you think the next people underneath them, like the nobles and things like that, how do you think they would feel? Okay. And the next question says, do you think having five major religions in Europe is going to be a problem in the future? You know, because we got the um, Catholics, we got the Puritan or Protestants, the Calvinist, the, um, the Church of England, the Angelic. Um, what's the other one? Oh, dang, I forgot. That's why I tell you, you need to look at that map. <laughs> uh, dang it, I forgot what the other one Lutheran. Lutheran. That's the other one. You know, do you think there's going to be any trouble? And look at the map. Go back to that map where I told you um, to kind of like mark it in your head um, and see how close they are to one another and things like that. And do you think there'll be problems? Okay. So once you answer the, the exit ticket question, you are done for this lesson. Hopefully you learned something new. Hopefully you enjoyed the class. Okay. Um, so that's it. I will see you guys later. You guys take care and you be safe.